Game number one was a true barn burner. We'll see if game number two works out just as well. Picks and bans, P's and B's, pretty please. I'm expecting a slobber knocker out of this one here. Enix, they need to find some sort of redemption here heading into game two if they want to keep their dreams of heading into Valencia alive. Team Rival not willing to first pick the Kepri, so they'll ban it out themselves. Enix don't want to see Kalos on Fafnir either, so they're going to ban out the little dwarf. And Soul. I, I really like that ban. I think Enix's mid laner Lobster plays a fantastic Soul, so get that out of here. I'm expecting Rival to first pick Terra here because of the way they orchestrated their strategy in game number one. Obviously taking that with the Morrigan going into Terra every single time, so Going to be the Nemesis actually to start things off, though. Still could look for the Terra as it's available or allow Enix to pick it up and go for the Morrigan. Well, Enix are going to go for the Geb right here. Going to have a little bit more defensive prowess, big man things. We'll see what he's able to do with that. And then Ho Yi, that's Fun Ball's go to character these days. He really likes this god, and for good reason. He's really strong on this character. And, well,. It's kind of what Deathwalker does with Bologna. That's true. Uh, Hu Yi on Fun Baller is going to be a great start for how they control the early pacing of the game. Hu Yi is one of these gods which can easily take down a jungle buff very quickly between his ricochet, especially if Enix has been focusing on the strategy with their support to help him out. So Sun Wukong is also going to join us here for Enix, a character that has come back. Why is he so prevalent? We've seen the addition additional buff to his abilities, right? There was a 10% additional physical power scaling on his Master's Will, 15% extra on his Cudgel. And then on top of that, the Shifter Shield Resurgence yeah. here is a great addition for this god. The way he scales in the mid game, just spamming these abilities every single time. So Poseidon, a character that we haven't seen in a little while, will make the return. This is Lobster's one of Lobster's, oh man. Everything is one of Lobster's go-to characters. He's been playing for so damn long. But Isis is the response, and Wolfie's Isis. Now, that's the truth. There's a lot of control here with just that Isis alone. The damage is very evident out of rival between this Ares nemesis. Now, the control between Isis Cupid really allowing that chemistry that rival need to take into these team fights. That huge double AoE ultimate between Isis Cupid is going to match out this Geb Hu Yi between the Suns and the Cataclysm. But now, Hunbat's here for fails. This could put Enix in a good spot if they engage first. Double monkey. Double monkey. They win. Double monkey. No, but real talk, Isis and Cupid create a great situation where the enemy just cannot walk in that area. We'll see how it works out. Team Rival versus Enix, bringing it to you. Game number two here. Enix needs to figure out some sort of way here as we're going to head into the game here momentarily. We're trying to see how Enix can stop the early game aggression here out of Rival between the way that they started off in the first game. Rival found that early flank here, so I'm not expecting Enix to fall for it two times in a row. Uh oh chains on a fun ball. Very quickly, fun ball's in trouble. The jump over the top and the clap. Vote gets the kill. Wow. Rival yet again with an early first blood. Last game, it was in the mid lane. This game in the duel lane, just mixing things up, not allowing Enix any breathing room. First blood now going in the way of Vote here and the death onto fun baller. That's going to create such a disparity here in this duel lane matchup. Very important play that Team Rival bring that over to the left side instead of the middle lane. You got to keep things fresh. You got to see things changing. That's why we saw that that um, the strategy pushing up as a unit, making sure nobody surprised the mid lane. Well, once that becomes meta, you got to move on. Funballer also has some more assistance there. He had fails right around the corner, along with Big Man, even popping the Frenzy out of Big Man, but it just wasn't enough. These level one chains from Kallus is so detrimental towards crippling your opposition here, and I'm pretty sure Funballer didn't go for his dive bomb. If he did, he would have definitely popped Bs and used that just to get away, and not having that option available to him, he's gonna take an early spill, and despite dying on the left-hand side, Ducky is left alone on the right in a 1v2 situation. Not ideal for a Sun Wukong. I mean, a Sun Wukong is certainly one of the characters that can handle that better than others, right? Sun Wukong can certainly clear by himself and, and do the whole nine. Why do you say it the other way? He just needs to not fall behind against the Bologna. He needs to make the same timing of rotations in these team fights. Ducky gonna stop out the bludgeon here. That's, that's the one, one That's the one advantage that Sun Wukong does have in this matchup to stop the slam portion of the bludgeon. But at the end of the day, with Bologna still getting those AOE cleaves off of the hammer, it's just gonna make it 
easier to outclear that someone can't up until he gets about level six or seven. Yeah, I mean that that's really when he comes into comes into play and then he looks to clear the wave nice and quickly. But team rival, quickly off to a lead. Stealing away the blue buff against a ducky here, even investing into this Bumba's mask for the Sun Wukong solo lane, and by not getting his own blue buff, this 500 gold investment investment of the Bumba's mask is basically useless. So not only is he behind in the net worth category, there's additional 500 gold of the Bumba's mask that's not going to really translate in these team fights. Right. He just needs. He should have, or can't say should have. You can't predict the future, but I'm sure he would rather now have a pair of boots. Vote on this Cupid. Certainly gonna have a lot of airy denial. That's what I was getting. That's what I was getting into in the picks and bans towards the end of it. Wolfie and Vote combined will just create a giant spot of. You can't walk here. That's true. Ducky though, trying to hold the wave outside of his tower as long as he could, can. Not gonna lose the gold on the tower, but he takes a little bit of poke in the process every single time. And with this control from Rival in the solo, jungle, and mid, they're able to take away not only the blue and speed, but control the right side mid harpies along with a fire giant elemental. So Ooh. Ooh. The dash forward, gonna cut off big man Tings. No ultimate available for him, but the damage doesn't seem to be enough. The chains, though, that's gonna change everything. Big man Tings gonna fall down here for the second kill for Team Rival, the second kill for Vote. Wow, Callus, he knows his damage output. He finds two chains onto Geb. He recognizes, like, this is enough to kill him. Let me min max my damage and find the third chain onto Funballer <laughs> just for good measure. Second kill for Rival already, not even four minutes into the game. Getting off into a pretty good start. Now trying to continue the trend of invading the speed buff. Yeah, I think, I, I think the loss to the Poppies was just a fluke. I, I might watch that VOD back again tonight, Tolly, to see just what went wrong because Rival, they look, they, ju they just look so good. This is such a strong team. Enix is one of the best teams on the planet. Ooh, a lot of trouble is Lobster. He's going to get caught by the max distant spirit ball. The wing gusts are good as well. Third kill for Rival at such a quick pace. Understanding that Fails did not have the fear no evil available to him. He didn't really care. If the, if the Kraken was available. It was the fear no evil that, that Team Rival were afraid of. As soon as that went down, they can look for the kill in mid lane. And there was not much mana on the Poseidon either way. The Purification Bead's not available. Deathwalker getting the better end out of Ducky yet again. Blue buff, on additionally to the speed buff, keep stripping that away from Enix is the goal from Rival. And with the first back from both of these soul laners, Ninja Tabby for Deathwalker and not enough gold here for Ducky to finish off the boots because of that Bumba's mask. Mm, yep, that's, that's coming back to haunt him a little bit. The Bumba's, I mean, so theoretically the Bumba's will help him uh, do extra damage, help him actually kill the buff and give him some sustain. But if you're just getting repeatedly invaded, then what point is there to it, right? You, normally, I've been experimenting with this item myself as well, and it's great if you're able to just sit in your own lane, secure your own buffs without any sort of invades. But the way Rival have been playing this out, they they look at the they press tab, right? Mm -hmm. They see everybody's items in the beginning of the game. Once you kind of get into vision of each other, once those items are revealed, and they look like, okay, what are they building? How can we possibly exploit this? Okay, we see Ducky with Bumba's mask. He doesn't get a right to go for his own jungle now. Sure. Yeah, not at all. And I mean, that was what Team Rival did last game as well. Enix got the first speed and blue buff around nine minutes. That was the first time they were actually able to touch their own buffs because Rival had just repeatedly invaded. And continuing the same exact trend, speeds and blues stripped away from Enix while Rival secure their own. One level disparity thus far for Ducky. Not a great spot if you're a Sun Wukong player that needs to not necessarily fall behind. He's a pretty decent god from ahead, but he needs to stay even with that enemy soul laner because he needs to be in the team fights at the same time. So if you're losing the lane, you need to catch up and farm. So you might actually give up rotating to a team fight just to sit there. Well, that's going to be beads out of fun ball. That's exactly what Float really expects to get out of that one. And, you know, I think I think we should break down that phrase totally. A lot of times we talk about gods being good or bad from from behind. We'll hold that as Kalos looks for a kill in the mid lane. Or a couple. Slowly walking up. Gets one chain. Still looking for more. There's the Kraken after the fact. Deathwalker already has a kill. And the ultimate not even needed from the Ares. Instead, waiting it out. 
Nice ult from Wolfie to reheal. Level 9 on Wolfie's Isis allows him the damage reduction on the level 2 circle of protection compared to Lobster only sitting a level 7 with the pen boots. And this point, the Kraken man doesn't have that much damage to really negate right. the protection, the damage protection from the circle protection with the healing. Ooh, here comes Ducky by himself into a slew of the other team. Wolfie very low, 15%. He's going to get chased out by the solo laner, but Kallus here as well. Uses the ultimate. Good thing he saved it then. Still gets the kill as Ducky. But will he get the counter kill? The answer is no. Ducky's going to wind up with a second one. Scratch that, give it a fun ball. But Enix wind up with two kills on the right side. That's three, two for the rotating hunter. Whether it's the Xing Wei or the Hu Yi, Fun Baller knows when it's time to rotate to defend his own buffs. Second time in a row in two games where Fun Baller just has these spidey senses tingling. Like, hey, I need to rotate around. And nice rotation from Ducky with the teleport to not lose this wave under his tower. But Vote is going to be able to strip away a red buff. So it's not all doom and gloom for Rival despite losing that last team fight. They're still ahead. Even more impressive to see Fun Ball make their rotation on the Ho Yi. The, yes. Than the Jing Wei. That's just a true understanding of timing windows. Your yeah. speed buff's coming in 30 seconds. I have enough time to clear this wave. Back to base. Start walking over there. I might lose maybe two melee minions under my tower if there is no team fight. But losing that potential 50 gold is way less hurtful than losing this potential team fight. You know, I, th I think that's, that's kind of valuable is that... Funball is a very good player. Everybody knows that, but players come in different shapes and forms. And I think Funball kind of downplays his smite IQ. I think he just kind of plays, oh, 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 I'm looking for the hot ricochet, mate. But at the end of the day, Funball really understands uh, timing windows specifically, whether it's specific items or buff respawn timers. He, he's a guy that really gets it. And you combine that with just his raw skill, it's a really fun show to watch. It's just a team play effort. Whether or not it's him making the conscious decision or whether or not it's somebody calling that out for him to make that rotation, he's willing to be there and sacrifice that important farm in his own lane. He's been playing this game for so long. Mid lane, fun ball gets a kill. Fails gets a kill as well. I think they pissed off Enix in game number one. Totally. That's what it looks like. <laughs> Enix are just coming out in full force. They find these two picks, and now they're going for a very early nine-minute goal fury, but they don't have crack, and Wolfie does have that circle protection, but he's in mid. Collis and Vote both have ultimates. This is not as bad as it might seem. There's the ultimate resetting the gold fury. And Collis still in the chain. Gold fury goes down. It's Enix. Well done. Just not in position there. Wolfie backed to base, so he didn't have that circle protection ready and willing to be able to stop out that one, despite the Kraken not available for Lobster. Will Wolfie not around that corner? Very easy pickup. Enix are able to cut this deficit with that Gold Fury tying the game. That one's going to be a great look for Enix, but... Will they be able to hang on to it? Look at that or graph. It was like about it was about 3,000 gold and experience, not even two to three minutes ago, but all it took was two sloppy engagements from Rival just over-aggressing. Now, granted, it was a great counter-rotation from Fallen Baller the first time around, but that second, right. second team fight in mid was just so unnecessary. Oh, nice silence by Wolfie. I love that. That, that, that's the type of play on ISIS that I like to watch, and that's the type of team synergy that I keep bringing up. Wolfie, so the distance for that silence is not long. It's a close range ability. Ice Ice Baby sees that he's getting overhand smashed. You don't have time to verbally communicate that. Wolfie sees his teammate drops a silence. That's what you have to do, and not only that, you're slowing down the enemy target. You're stealing away some of his magical protections to allow you and your teammates to get it anyway. So this ability has a lot of utility, so try Trying to spam it uh -oh. is not a bad idea. Collis getting collapsed on here. Two chains, and there's a Kraken right under his feet. Still relatively tanky. Does not care. It do not matter. It's only a level 10 Poseidon not having Gem of Isolation complete. This is not the power play that Enix needs to be looking for. This Ares is not that far out of position to try to burst him down. Sitting in level 9 with the Reinforced Greed, with this Gauntlet of Thieves, he has enough health and protections, not to mention this Bracer of Undoing, which wasn't even used to counter that Kraken. Listen to you, listen to you and your bars. That was pretty fun. I actually didn't even pay attention. <laughs> I'll re-listen to this VOD. I liked it. I'll give you I'll give you five points, not not the usual ten points. I'll give you five since it was unintentional. Usually I just go ten points. I'll give you five. How about that? Better than last time. I'll take it. <laughs>
so far, Enix have tied the game, but they haven't done anything with it. Um, they are looking for their next opportunity, which is exactly what you should expect um, from a unit in this position. Enix and team rival, Gold's Fury, not up just yet. Fire Giant, way too early to aggress on that. Teams really just kind of going, rivals sitting there going, oh, okay. We'll pump the brakes. And Enix going, yeah, you better pump the brakes. And everybody just kind of going back to their corner going, all we'll disgruntled see. and whatnot. <laughs> Ducky now managing to make a comeback with everyone pumping the brakes here, sitting at level 13, actually one level ahead of Deathwalker now. Surprising to see the Sun Wukong making such a great comeback here, sitting at 1-0-4. Finishing off this Gladiator Shield here, it's been a resurgence of this item here with a lot of different changes to a lot of different items. Players have been experimenting, so this item also is why we see more Sun Wukong play in action. This item giving you 10% cooldown reduction, it's cheaper than Breastplate of Valor, and every single time you hit an ability, you're gaining health and mana, and considering both the Cudgel and the Slow from Sun Wukong is only at a 10 second cooldown, you're getting that passive every 10 seconds. I mean, this this item, so the bri we call them bridge items, relatively inexpensive items that are purchased early on, sometimes sold later, but more importantly, just give you just enough stats so that you can progress on your build. When we see Hunters, we talk about Ikaval being relatively inexpensive. That's a bridge item. Solo laners used to buy the Mark of the Vanguard. That's a bridge item. But with this uh, Gladiator Shield at what, 1,700 gold? Yes. 18, 1,700 gold, that is by definition the bridge item that the solo laners, most solo laners, have wanted forever. And despite being behind earlier on and having the Bumba's Mask that didn't really work out for him because of how cheap this Gladiator Shield is, it's not able to really compete with that Mystical Mail. Circle. Portal Demon, though, going for Rival. Yeah, Circle of Protection to help us that one out. There's the Fear No Evil jumping right side. He's going to be fails right on top of Vote. He's slowed and he doesn't have the dash available, Tully. He's likely to fall down oh. until Kala shows up, pulls Ducky under the tower, and sends him back to the Shadow Realm. Two chains onto Lobster, not finding the third one great pick onto Ducky, but everyone from Rival, I'm sorry, just Wolfie and Vote were so low that they had to back here. But having this portal team allows him to get back into the action here. Not mu many waves here to be able to push under that tier one tower, whether it's mid or the solo lane, which gives enough time for Ducky to make the respawn and find the teleport. Oh man, that one hurts for fails. He's slamming his sacred monkey button so hard mm. at that moment. Two players, one hit away under the tower. If Fails can throw the ball and it hits both of those players, he doesn't even have to teleport. They're already dead. Double kill from the monkey. Oh, man. You know what? You know what? You know what? You know what would have made that happen? Bracer. Just saying. <laughs> is this the new Sunder discussion here? <laughs> but either way, though, Bracer, yes, has been making a resurgence. It's and been for, one of my favorite items for so long. I'm so happy to see it picked up. I mean, there's so many different options for a lot of different gods as well. Hunbats needs Purification Beads, obviously, to survive against Kallus every single time he gets pulled, unless he was playing a different jungle that has CC immunity. But Hunbats not having that option has to go Purification Beads. And for the great engage, you need the blink to have that surprise factor. Oh, oh, oh. I I, I, yes, I perhaps should qualify. The relics that Hunbats has, I think, are the correct ones. Okay. I don't think that he should have Bracer instead of Beads so that every time Kalos looks at me, gets pulled. I, I don't think that whatsoever. I'm having some fun. But I do like Bracer. It's a good item. I it's like, a great hey, item. I like to go Vulcan in the soul lane and just rock the Bracers, man. It works. Okay. It actually, it, it's ranked. Anything works. Okay, I, I'll give it to you because you get the you get the you get the double shotgun blast. Yeah. I do I do it on Habwa, jungle. Please don't play in my ranked games. But you see it a lot with those. Those are my favorites. When you get the reset, when you're able to fire off an ability, hit bracer, fire off the same ability, you get tons of of hilarious moments. Uh, and here with team with team rival, you see uh, Ares with the bracer. He's going to be able to change, 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 flames, bracer, change, 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 and you're just stuck. It it's makes sense. Terrible. It makes sense, though, for him to be able to do this. Not only is he going to reset the cooldowns, because the chains will go on cooldown after that third chain, so the duration of this, the damage over time and the yep. cripple, then you pop that cool, for the cooldown exactly. reduction. 
which helps, but at the same time, he's going to be taking a lot of damage. So everything about this relic is helping Ares stay alive and be aggressive at the same time. Right. It, it gives the double edge. It gives both of the options, whereas before the Terra, you only really get your health back. The, the cooldown reset isn't really helping you as much as some of the other characters um, that he was playing earlier. Kala's here. Still looking. Oh, he only gets one. Feral's going to go and use the beads. No big deal. It's not a bad idea. It's just to force the beads even out of fails because now whenever he's going to look for this blink engagement on the That's Fear No Evil, he's going to probably get disrupted. It's a win for Enix, though. Wolfie popped the ultimate expected That's the pull. That's true. Wolfie expected the pull. And with that with that circle of protection down, Tolly, yes, Enix is going to look for the gold fury. This is absolutely the right call. Love this idea. They, they have the Kraken available. Enix has the upper hand on this objective, but are still trepidations about pulling the trigger. They don't want to take a team fight quite yet. They want to find maybe somebody out of position. Two ultimates down from rival. Only big man Tings without that Cataclysm for another 45 seconds here. Dark Walker going to find the knockup stun from a distance. Connects onto Ducky, even forcing out the ultimate. Well, there's going to be a different ultimate from a different monkey altogether. Down south side, sending everybody walking north. The Kraken used. Collis and Vogue low, can't reach the rest of the team. Ice Ice goes down. Kalos walks into the wrong neighborhood. He's got a good chain, but Ducky's got a better stick. Not dead yet. No, Ducky, he's oxing on in, finds the slow, cudgel needed, Ox. connects it. Two members dead from rival. Now one is to take the teleport under that tier two tower, and Enix are going to sit pretty with that red buff after that victory. What did the Ducky say to the Ice Ice baby? What did the Ox say? Let me ox you a question. Somebody 18 and a half in. minutes in. Somebody Gold in Fury production. secured by Enix. Great stuff after the stuff here. They hey. get the red. They get the Gold Fury. This has been a complete turnaround from the squad. They were losing so badly here. In the first game, but making this kind of mental adjustments in the second game shows that they're still here in contending for their rightful spot at Valencia. I, lo I love the graph. It really tells the story of this game. Right early, Team Rival find the kill on the left-hand side. Kind of just shoots fun ball on the foot and says, look, it's not going to be easy. And then Enix say, all right, fine. And they just continue fighting into it, and they deal with it. They find a couple of team fight victories. Obviously, the gold trio that just happens. And Enix, once down 2,500, find themselves leading 2,400. Still looking for some more action around the right side of the map here. Enix have a decent kind of uh, an advantage to be able to take this fight. Kallus yet again finding the pull There's this time. There's the pull. Big damage on the fails. He's gone. Vote. Vote for him. Fun ball, the other hunter gets a kill onto the, uh, onto the Guardian. So it's a one for one so far, although in rival's favor. Losing your jungler a little bit worse Death than Walker. losing your guardian. Wait, Death, Death Walker, Walker just got eliminated. He st stayed in the back line for just a little bit too oh, long. And rough. now without Ares or Bologna for rival, it's going to be a four on three advantage for Enix. They're not wanting to go for the Fire Giant, obviously, too early in the game for that. So going to get 500 gold under mid. And might push it. Look who, no, 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 okay, okay, okay. I saw, the, I saw the, the body language, I guess you'll see. The, the, the aggression from Enix looked like they were trying to catch Vote out. But as soon as some friends showed up, the tower was the only option. And Enix leave their kill count at number nine, leading still by about 3,000. It's just a game of inches for positioning, honestly. You're like kind of elbowing each other exactly. for a little bit of extra wiggle room. And Enix was able to put more pressure on that tier one mid tower, try to see if they could find somebody else extra. And if they did, then they could extend towards the tier two, but not finding it. They're going to pull their elbows back into their side and just walk comfortably away with that 500 gold. Yeah, positioning is so important here. You, so, Cupid, if Cupid is at a spot a little bit on the... If you split the tower in half and the Cupid is on the front side of the tower, his dash gets disrupted by the wall, you see Enix go for the kill. Mm. Cupid stays on the back side. Enix knows that his dash goes right into the jungle. They don't want to fight into the enemy jungle, so they don't go for the kill. If Cupid walks up two body sizes, he's dead. That's how important his positioning was. That's how precise his positioning was, let's say.
21 minutes into the game, rival this time around experienced their first actual deficit in this whole entire set. Down about two and a half thousand gold, almost three thousand gold. But more importantly, the experience that's rounding up to about five thousand here. And Ducky, despite having such a slow start, I would say, yeah, now tied with duck uh tied with death walker here he did have that one level advantage earlier on but now sitting pretty at level 17 on the sun wakong getting a lot of cooldown reductions with the breastplate of valor with the gladiator shield and now really banking on winning these team fights by picking up this hot of the urchin ducky and death walker are the two they represent the two mindsets of the solo lane anatoly i i think you went to this i think ducky goes to the school of of Anatoly, but right now, Ice Ice taking Collins, uh, taking Big Man Tings to school. Oh my Big God. burst, and Vote gets the last hit. Thank you, Nemesis. Just not able to survive this time around. Big Man Tings, he's going for an aggressive option with the blink instead of the bracer, right. so all the damage bursted by the Nemesis, showing what it's truly capable of. So what I was talking about with Deathwalker and Ducky, Deathwalker is the guy with the shades on, wanting to get the highlight play. Ducky plays for the team, like Dimmy, like you once upon a time. He doesn't mind if he loses the lane. He's going to come up. We watched him stand there while he gets 2 v one right? All right, man. I'll get you later. That's Ducky's mentality. He wants to win the game later on with the team. Deathwalker, he wants to montage you a little bit. It's all about the utility, honestly. Whatever you can bring to the team fight that's more than just pure damage and denial here from Deathwalker, yep. there's uh, there's something that could be said about these, whether it's a Solon or a Guardian, about mentalities and how you play team fights, and that also can be shown by what you're building into. Now, that's also dependent on what god you're playing as well, because you can't have the same exact utility build on the Bologna, right. for example. And one of the, one of my favorite things about about that sort of thought process that solo leaders go have two main schools of thinking is that neither one is better or worse. It's all about what works with the team. That's true. If you switch Deathwalker and Ducky, who I think are both phenomenal players, I think both teams are worse off because Deathwalker Death Walker has that, that individual mentality where Enix needs Ducky to play with the team because you got fun ball and lobster, right? Well, you got fun ball and fails, excuse me, right? Lobster and Ducky, you're going to play with the unit. And then you, you, you look at F Ducky on the other team, Rival need that superstar, and Deathwalker is defaulted to be that guy. Ooh. So you, both sides are represented. There's the Kraken. Kallus in trouble. He's going to be down with us. He saves himself. The which bracer. He does. The bracer got him to full health. The Isis Circle also healing him up a little bit further. Vote with the Cupid Hearts to sustain Wolfie even further on. And it was a great engage from Fails, but even better counter engage by Kallus to be able to absorb all those cooldowns, Oof. survive the Kraken, and then turn it around with that bracer. The only ultimate available is Fun Balls. Duckies, Ducky. is, Duckies is there, but team fight ultimate. Mm. The suns come down, will have more of an impact on Ducky's extra life. I, I heard you solo later. Uh. <laughs> Listen, when it comes down to it, fighting around the Gold Fury, I think Fun Ball's ultimate. A little bit more relevant sure. than Ducky's. Depending on how aggressive Ducky wants to be. Because Fun Baller can use that ultimate defensively as well, just to zone out depending on how aggressive Enix wants to be here. But Rival, they need to respond to this goal here that's being pulled by Enix. Well, like I said, with the subs available, Enix is, this is theirs to take. They're going to go for the fight. Ducky uses that ult. Very important that he had it there. The rest of the team going to fall back on the, on the five. What is it called? It's the goal here. Oh, thank you. Gold Fury going to get started again by Enix. Wrapping around underneath is Ducky. Really set off of that Spear Ball alone. Big Man Ting's going in. There goes the Suns. Now it's Kallus out of position. And there, yeah, the Suns waiting for the team fight. Backside vote in trouble. Aegis saves him for the moment. Spear Ball saves him for the second. Wolfie saves him for life. Great team synergy. Team rival on a tear and they're gonna keep pressing on towards the goal theory oh, with plays. the hearts from vote he was sitting at about five percent health one one slap like one breath one little flick in the nose just one like one little one little look in his direction that's all you got everything i was about to say is not cast friendly <laughs> i figured team rival that one's not cast friendly if you're rooting for enix tie game one more time, 26 minutes. Team Rival come back, they fight into it, they get the team fight win off of fantastic 
bodyguard play from Wolfie. Ooh, but diving into the back line is Big Man Ting. Still rivals. Double girdles here from the opposite ends. Big Man Ting's trying to Ducky. roll on out, but Rival secure themselves the portal demon. Ducky's still looking for the jungler. All right, size baby picks up one, two hearts, three hearts, full HP. Lobby going for it. Stun into the Kraken. Ice size baby, where you at? 11 kills for Enix. Retribution shield not enough to save the life out of Ice size baby. That's two clean picks from Enix and giving them maybe the opportunity to do this fire jump, but without the Kraken oh, here. Oh, Deathwalker. Oh, Deathwalker. No. Deathwalker up down. Can't save Wolfie. The Aegis will for a brief second, but fails in fun ball. Team up to take down the two that walked through the portal. Now, right. now they could do the fire and shine after those two picks. After the gift. Wolfie shouldn't have taken the portal at the same time that Deathwalker did. Needed to bait out his soul laner a little bit longer before going through that one. Both the Suns and the Fear No Evil was used immediately upon Deathwalker's arrival and Wolfie was just the unfortunate victim after the fact. Yeah, Wolfie didn't have an ultimate available. There was, I just, that was... Rival have done so many swell things that, you know, sometimes you just, you, your brain turns off for a, for a brief second. I, like, sure, that statement's a little tug-in-cheek, but, I mean, totally, you're a player. So, the mentality that Rival had there was that they had no vision of Fire Giant. They were going in blind on purpose to maybe stop the Fire Giant attempt out of Enix. Right. That was their goal. Yeah. Which is a valiant goal. I don't mind Deathwalker going through there. Like, like we said, I, Wolfie was, unfortunately, um... Just a mental misstep coming out from the mid laner who are these days a rare mental misstep. Very true. Honestly. Very, very true. Enix knew the plans, though, out of Rival. They knew that they were the ones with the vision, mm -hmm. denying Rival the opportunity to see whether or not the Fire Giant was being pulled originally, allowing them more time to be able to just wait it out, honestly, because there was two dead members from Rival anyway, so there was no rush for Enix to pull the trigger on the Fire Giant. 3K and a Fire Giant is the lead that Enix command at the moment. Collis and Deathwalker cautiously pushing up the left side. Tier 1 towers, all gone. Tier 2 towers, the only defense left for Team Rival, Sans the Phoenixes. And as we approach half an hour, the game has belonged to both teams at one point or another. Right now, currently riding along with Enix in their trip towards the finish line. Very curious to see if they can hold it. Deathwalker knocked up. Leading the charge, Deathwalker trying to keep his tier two alive. Ducky receiving the shield, trying to absorb a lot of damage. The chains from Cal is doing quite a bit here, but without the blink for this Ares, it's very difficult to engage for him. Still playing it safe is Enix. Don't want to go in too hard. They understand they have a slight advantage, but not a gigantic one. Really just waiting on an opportunity they're just going to walk in and see how Team Rival react. Ice Ice Baby on the right side being protected or stopped by Fails, however. And slowly, Tower just chipping down. Ultimate out of vote might be good here, but Collis is the answer after the fact. Two players grabbed, other two beats. Collis in trouble. He uses the Bracer, but it's not enough this time around. Fun Baller finding the first victim of this engagement. Tier 2 still stands for as long as it possibly can. 5 on 4 for Enix for another 30 seconds. Going to start transitioning over towards that mid lane. This Tier 2 in mid should fall as well. Enix too smart. Rival threw them. I love what Rival did. Vote throws out the ultimate and catches four people in it, understanding they're going to beads. And then Collis goes in and gets to pull on everybody. They win the team fight. They go ahead, they win the game. Well, here's the problem nobody beats the Cupid ultimate because they understood that Collis was coming up secondary. Enix turn around, they kill the support. Fantastic intelligence and t I wish we had a listen in because somebody calls do not use beads. Somebody calls that totally. That's that's awesome. And Enix this time around with the gap. They banned it around in the first game and picking it up the second game for Big Man Tings. And he's been able to save a lot of his teammates in crucial moments here and be being able to get pulled here despite against Callus. Yeah. You can still bait yourself out expecting Big Man Tings to bail you out with that very oh, important Geb shield. Shh, shh, shh. They're hunting weapons. Enix here. Deathwalker. Hey, hey guys, I'm going to go for the blue buff. Guys, I think I want a blue buff. Oh, hey, bud! Deathwalker Aww. just gets chased out. He doesn't die. It wasn't as 
It wasn't as climactic as I really anticipated, but it was kind of funny. That shield charge coming out of Death Walk at the last possible moment barely clips the tail end up out of that Fear No Evil, which disrupted the follow-up from Lobster. Ice Ice Baby. I love the decision to go Magi's Blessing. Not a lot of choices to really strip it away very easily. You're looking at Wolfie with the Long Range Spirit Ball. Kalas with the Chains. Obviously, that means he's already engaging. I think the Magi's Blessing combined with the beads that he has selected for himself. I mean, Ice Ice is just never going to get pulled by Ares. It's just not going to be possible because they're on the same team. Yeah, it's twice for me today. Oh, well. <laughs> Unless there was a Morgan on the opposite end, that would be quite a I sight appreciate to see. The what bailout. if there's what if there's a god that actually just forces you to fight your ally? Like Rom Oh, oh, uh, Sir Cat, Madness. Yeah, uh, but like, what gets. if we had more like that? More madness. More madness. This is Smite. I appreciate the, the, the attempt to bail me out, but oh well. I make mistakes. Fire Giant has respawned here. 32 minutes into the game. <laughs> Enix with a six to 7,000 gold lead, but it's still fightable for Rival. Oh, absolutely. With the Fire Giant on Enix's side, it becomes a lot harder. So Rival absolutely need to maintain control of this. Ice Eyes Baby not getting pulled by Kalos anytime soon, but can Kalos pull the other team? That's really the question that we have to ask ourselves. He was unable to find it in the last engage. Enix was too smart. But with the team fight going on, are they going to be able to really make that call as a question? Tucky doing a good job just banging out some cooldowns against the Wolfie, but he doesn't really care too much because of that passive, the way it works. Gaining HP 5 and MP 5 based off of witnessing a bunch of deaths. Kraken against Ice Ice, Baby Bees, and Bracer being used. Retribution topping him off. The Bracer, uh, that's a win for Rival. The Bracer on Ice Ice, so much less important than a full Kraken. Over the wall comes Funball. There's the Collis grab. Wolfie, pop, pop. Double kill for the mid laner. That time it worked. So much damage. Where did they go? Enix now fighting in a 3v5 here. Vote and Wolfie experiencing some pain from that furious Woo. monkey, but fails not wanting to go in despite winning that team fight. Playing it super safe, wanting to be 100% healthy before they go for this fire giant. That was the play that Rival tried to make happen on the left hand side of the map that Enix was too smart for. No, sir. We don't need you, Will. Get the wheel. We won't pop the beads. That time they get pulled by Collis into the circle of prots, into the devastation. Team Rival, it's 10 to 14, and Enix lead them by about 6,000 gold. This is the time for Rival to start turning things around here. They have to go for this fire giant if they want to get back into this game. Deathwalker is going to start tanking this up here. Damage from Vote being dealt. Fire giant less than half health. Ducky trying to disrupt some of the DPS, keeping Vote and Wolfie preoccupied. Do they stick to this, Soli? They have to. They have to get something out of this. At this point, they have to. 25%, no circle of protection. Deathwalker, the only ultimate available. Up down is good. Fire Giant goes the way of Team Rival. Deathwalker securing that for himself. Ducky still trying to dive the backline, but it's Callus taking a lot of damage. Rival trying to retreat as best as they can. Big Man Tinks is here. His blink is available. Cataclysm could be the engagement tool. Rival are backing out. There it is. That is a big boy play. Team Rival are going to lose their tier two tower. Worth. Yes. F uh, what is that? A thousand gold in trade for the fire giant. Yes, sir. If you can spend a thousand gold in the store and buy your team a fire giant buff, would you? F 1,500 gold, I would sacrifice that in a heartbeat for my team. Like, yeah, we're going to lose this gold for the Fire Giant. This late in the game with everyone having about five and a half to six items complete here. It's very important for these teams to really start controlling this objective. And by losing that last encounter for Enix, they were playing so well that whole game. Yeah. And all it took was that one double pull into circular protection and rival just turn everything around the game can change on a hinge like that enix are very successful but team rival i think are the the team fighters at the moment and again i affectionately call this team energy have had called this team energy junior because of well a number of reasons that i won't dive into now but all positive 
I think it's time for me to stop calling them Energy Junior and just start calling them Team Rival. Wolfie gets the goal here, here giving them more of a comeback here. Now only 5,000 goal behind. Rival making strides towards getting back into the game. Yeah, brief pause. I really hope this one's brief. I want to see what happens. Enix, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if Enix comes back and beats them in a team fight and... We're here for another 20 minutes. We saw it in the first game how Enix got the fire giant, tried to aggress under the tier two solo tower out of rival, but the great Morgan transformation onto Terra mm -hmm. for Wolfie kept them in that team fight. The question is, how is Enix gonna hold on to this team fight? Because they don't have the same option that Wolfie did last game. Sure. If the damage from Lobster gets negated by all these bracers or the retribution out of Ice Ice Baby, then the team fight's gonna go in rival's way. Lobster has to be very calculating as to when he throws out that Kraken. Yeah, throw the Kraken out of the Ice Ice Baby, that was... He just didn't know the Bracer was there. That, like, that, that's, the only, that's the only explanation I have. Lobster is a veteran player. He understands that he kills the Nemesis in that situation. Basically, unless Nemesis has a Bracer of Undoing or a Meditation, and he happened to have a Bracer. And even if he does have Bracer, it's still better to crack in a target that has a bracer than a target that has an Aegis because sure. there's still kill potential right. there. The but, burst but, damage is available. What I'm saying is that if Lobster kills the jungler there, that's Enix's game. Almost. They get the fire giant, they get the subsequent team fight. Right now, Big Man Ting's going in. Rival get the portal demon. Kalas has a couple. Grabs a couple. Pop goes to Weasel. Cause the Weasel goes pop. Wolfie winds up with another kill. That's 11, but fails. Bites back. Taking down Big Man Ting. One for one. Deathwalker not available here. Fun Baller and Lobster taking a lot of damage. And now Ducky is caught between a rock and a hard place. Blinking oh. in his fails in the back line. Catching Wolfie off guard. Up top is going to be Ice Ice. Taking three with it, but he falls down. Three dead on the side of Team Rival. They had... The Fire Giant vote being chased here. They had the lead. Collis being chased here. But it's Enix that are going to take at least a Phoenix. I'm playing it safe. They could potentially. It's only vote alive here. Only 30 seconds for Deathwalker. And that wave is pushed relatively far that they could look for the aggression. But playing extra safe. I, I would have liked to see a right side Phoenix. I... All right, let's, let's think about it here. Fun Baller, Lobster, Ducky. Ducky tanks. Fun Baller goes on the Phoenix. Lobster helps Ducky survive. Doable if the wave is under the Phoenix. It was... Eesh. You know what? I, I it's take risky. it back. With this, this side of a game, nah, you right. Take the win. Go home. You wiped the Fire Giant. That's the win that you want to take. Team Rival used to have five players of the Fire Giant. Now they just have a Cupid. Enix wins there. We That's saw, a good win. We saw what happened in game number one when Rival pushed the tier two mid tower, almost got the tier two mid tower, and then got punished Very for it true. afterwards. Yeah. So this this whole set has yeah. just been back and forth action between game one, game two, and every five minute intervals in both games. Let's watch the graph one more time. Very rarely do I actually ask for the graph, but I think it's such an illustrative. It, it's so it's such a neat illustration in this regard because you see the game was owned by Team Rival with an early first blood all the way up until about 10 minutes when it came back and even out after that one enix respond with an objective of their own they control the game for a while team rival fight back into a team fight haha -ha, tie game from there enix launch but team rival are still fighting and dancing with it. And it just goes to show how evenly these two teams are matched here, heading into the 40-minute mark a play of action in the second game of the last set of the third week for Europe, trying to qualify to Valencia. These teams are getting closer and closer here. Enix itching their way a little bit more aggressively here, trying to find some more wards. Fire Giant started by Funball. He has a game shield, but it's quickly negated since Hunball gets hit by the fire giant. There's gonna be the initiation coming out from BMT, but he's by himself, Anatoly. There's the response, crack it underneath. Wolfie's there to help out. Oh, not finding the pull that he really wanted. So Big Man Ting's able to run away and fails. Is gonna retreat north side as well. Ducky's gonna get pulled back in. He doesn't have ult. And there's gonna be wing gust after the spirit ball. Ice Ice Baby gets the last hit. The jungler looking very strong here, one, four, and eight. A lot of those assists, very important. 
to our team Rival or where they're at. And this is the time for Rival to start grouping up here. Five on four. Ducky still dead for 55 seconds. That's all they need to be able to catch everyone slipping. It's only Fun Baller with his ultimate available. Look, 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 at, the, look at this. Oh, man. Fire Giant being started. We can't look at that. We'll look at this instead. 60% on the big man. Deathwalker and Ice Ice trying to do their best to zone. There's the girdle. That means go for it. Fire Giant going to be rushed down. Fails can't find an entrance. Team Rival will get the Fire Giant and push on into Enix. The monkey, no jump. He'll get shielded. He'll walk away. Team Rival group up right side. Everything is pretty much even here. Despite the slight 4,000 gold disparity, 41 minutes completely negated as Rival can easily start sieging all three remaining Tier 2 towers. Basically will even out the game. And this is Rival's time to shine. They have this Fire Giant buff for three and a half more minutes. Yeah, unfortunately for Enix, that last win just... They got to do it again. <laughs> I, I mean, think the the blink cataclysms from Big Man Tings are just too premature yeah. here. They didn't catch. They caught some good targets in the earlier stages there, but they're only catching one onto Wolfie. Now, granted, you're forcing the beads out of an Isis, which is nice to allow more follow-up from fails later on in that team fight. But it's better to just wait it out and allow Rival to group up to min-max the efficiency of your ult. Yeah, no, I, I think that was just a... a Mistake. Now, I'm not saying whether it was Big Man Tings going over aggressive or Enix not following up. It's a team mistake when that sort of thing happens at this level. Big Man Tings blinks over the wall, finds a Kata, but nobody's there. And like I said, it's less about who, which individual's fault it is and more about, listen, as a unit, it didn't work. Fix it. Wolfie with Book of the Dead. That's why you see that shield on top of him, giving him 20% extra health in a little bit of time here. And I like the patience out of Rival. They respected that Kallus had to back and try to finish off some more items here. Fully complete now with six items. Trying to even go for the Portal Demon instead of grouping up here. Now, you don't really need this objective. They're looking for the fight. They're looking for the fight, totally. They want Enix to try, to try and stop this. There's no need for Enix to even contest this with the Fire Giant squad. There's Fails, though. He's going for it. But the Frenzy popped on the other side. That cat is a huge deal. That cat is so much better. Down come the Suns. The Kraken's used as well. Enix have no ultimates available, but they have not killed anyone. Ducky's trying to run away. The Heart Bomb will catch him slipping. Funballer trying to run on the north side, but Rival are cutting him off. And Deathwalker is here. Funball jumping back. Ice Ice looking for it. Gets healed up thanks to the shield. Lobster. He's dead. Funball. He's dead. Well, he's next as soon as the Aegis is gone. There it is. Three dead from Enix. This is Rival's time to close out this set. Game. They are winning. Yes. They are. Game. <laughs> For real, though, Team Rival earning their victory here. Two zip, man. Enix, they tried. And they tried very well. I don't want anybody saying, oh, man, Enix got rolled over by Team Rival. This was a fantastic, fantastic set. I almost want to thank Rival and Enix for giving us such a great set to watch. They've just been, both of these two teams, honestly, have been playing a light out today. Both games actually going beyond the 40-minute mark here. Not something we've seen quite often in Season 4, at least in the SPL categories. But just going to show how evenly matched and such strong contention yeah. between the Europe side. Yeah, we keep talking about this five and three separation from Europe, and that's how close these teams are, folks. Right there. Wow, just a lot of fun to watch back and forth through the entire time. I'm going to make you pick a moment. What was your favorite moment in those two games? Uh, it was actually the first game when Rival pushed the tier to mid, barely couldn't get it, and then the comeback from Enix was starting to build up. A lot, of, a lot of fun points to really discuss all throughout the day. Thanks for watching. We're going to talk to the analyst on the desk. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. My name is LHS, and I'm joined again by Taco. We're also joined by, uh, from team rival Collis. How are you doing, Collis? Hello. I'm, I'm doing great. How's How are it? you doing? I'm doing very well. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel to get the 2-0 over Enix? Uh, great. Great. It, 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 really, it feels good. It feels good. I'm, I'm not. Uh, we, we were kind of uh, after puppies. We were kind of like, ah, we threw it, but we're, we're going to come back with Enix. We, we kind of expected a 2 0. 
uh, I see. Uh, I want to talk to you about the Kepri in that game one. You were everywhere. Uh, was I? I, I, I only saw myself abducting one guy for every 15 seconds, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Watching you on that Kepri, it really reminded me of basically Raffer at Worlds on his Kepri. You, your ultimates, the, uh, the positioning, you were just doing anything and everything that you could. Uh, yeah, I was definitely trying to keep my team alive and set up as much things as humanly possible. Understandable, but uh, now that you guys have managed to secure such a huge set victory over Enix, how are you guys feeling for the remaining two weeks and the rest of the games you guys have played looking towards Valencia? Uh, I, I, I think we feel that we can, uh, we, we can get there easily. We just need to not get, uh, <laughs> have problems that we had in game two against Enix. And as, lo as long as those mistakes don't happen, we should be able to uh, get there. For sure. Uh, and as good as the, your Kepri was game one, your, your, your Ares in game two, you looked really comfortable. I know it wasn't your dragon, you didn't get your Fafnir, but you looked really comfortable on this Ares pick. Uh, Ares is actually my favorite god, has been for a long time. Uh, I actually missed mo more chains than I did in last month. <laughs> But at least, at least I got pulls. So that definitely that's what that's good. what matters as an Aries, right? Uh, I, I, I always thought that chains matter more than pull. But then again, if I get a huge pull, then obviously it's uh, way better. Signs of a very confident and strong support player being able to recognize mistakes and looking to just steadily improve. And really, Kalis, I'd say like congratulations again to you and your team. Thank you guys you, did you. an excellent job today. But uh, are there any particular shout outs that you want to go ahead and give? Uh, shout outs to the org, shout outs to the fans, Team Rival fans. Uh, shout outs to Ice Calling, Invade Speed Buff, and then goes to Ellie's, and then we wipe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and shout outs to me missing all the chains in that game. <laughs> all right, thank you for joining us, Kalos, and good luck going forward. Let's take a look at that set as a whole. Game number one, it was all vote. Oh, it, it was definitely all vote. I, I think that as a whole, Rival were really given a run for their money by Enix. It was like totally Jess mentioned before, it came over to us. It was pretty incredible watching Enix almost fight back into that initial game, but Rival just able to close it out. And I mean, vote just played out of his mind, really. He really did. And this game was close at so many points. Even at the end, when Rival was closing in on the Titan, Enix didn't go out without a fight. No, Enix did not want to let this one go. I mean, we've mentioned it plenty of times before. This set is so important because it's really going to start determining who's going to be headed moving on towards Valencia. Now Enix has a very rough road ahead of them. And this is the point in game number two where everything completely changed. Enix had been leading this game. I, I mean, I was so surprised around like the 30 minute mark that they didn't just close it out, but unable to do so. And Rival, they sieged the opportunity that they were given and and as soon as they, all they needed was those few picks and there's nothing you can do. Death timers are just way too long and completely came back. You got to feel bad for Fumballer in this. His <laughs> stat line was ridiculous. And you had to think like, oh, they're, they're going to close it out now. Okay, now they're going to close it out. Okay, now they're going to close <laughs> it out for sure. And then they never do. And then this team fight, and it just, it feels bad, man. It's It was completely heartbreaking because really him and Ducky at multiple stages, as I was watching that, I, I saw like notably Ducky 3, 1, and 7, Fumballer 6, 1, and 4. They were both such huge members of every single team fight. And so the second that one of them fell, it, it just led into this domino effect where <laughs> Rival were just able to take advantage of the, of the moment. And I mean, they sieged it. For sure. I mean, we look at how close this EU division is, and I mean, this proves it right here. I mean, Rival and Enix, this game had a lot of uh, implications, and I think it really lived up to the hype. Uh, I mean, the only other game really today that had more implications, I, I obey and elevate just because elevate could fight their way to the top. 
if they could find even just a split with Obey here. I think that Elevate seemed a little bit off their game today, more so than usual. They're typically a squad that seems a little bit more composed, but today it just wasn't coming through for them. Adaraxia, however, was having a whole lot of fun displaying his brand new meta ADC build. Incredible, and it <laughs> should be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see people start trying that one out in ranked. But I mean, still, shout outs to Adaraxia. This, this ROM gameplay was absolutely incredible. I mean, we talked about Adaraxia at the start of the show with his uh, Transcendence Rama. <laughs> Who does that? Adaraxia does it. Who does this build? Adaraxia does this. And he just does it well, and you don't question it. He didn't want to waste time building off of those stacks and just went for the shifters instead because it's almost like having Transcendence. It's just the difference is y you don't get the mana, you just get the power spike. But as much as Game 1 was the Adaraxia show, Game 2, Pretty Prime took this game over. Oh, yeah, no, Pretty Prime was absolutely running it, and I mean, that's kind of what you expect to happen whenever Pretty Prime gets Vulcan. Unfortunately, Foreign Alyssa on such an immobile god, just really nowhere for her to try and escape. There was so much setup potential on the side of Obey, and they just completely dominated Elevate in that set, and I think that it even caught Obey a little bit off guard, because Obey, I, I think, holds Elevate to a pretty high regard, and I, I think a lot of teams respect Elevate in the sense that they're more than a where the fact that they have some very talented players that have the potential in them to find these closeouts as far as splits or just set wins are concerned. Exactly. I, I mean, <laughs> we, we looked at Elevate. They were a team that was trending upwards and then losing their jungler and not having quite the stability there yet. It, it really feels like it's impacted the team as a whole, and they're still trying to find their way back to the, you know, the track upwards. Yeah, the, it's the building process, but uh, I mean, that's kind of the, the story for a lot of these teams right now in EU, and even though they're still working on each other, I mean, they're still, it, it's it's a huge learning game, and there's a, a big learning curve as far as EU is concerned. We saw that in set number two, actually, with NRG versus Burrito, where Burrito, I, I think, had a, they, they packed a punch into NRG that they weren't really, I don't think they were expecting it in game number one, where Burrito was actually in control, but it it was a short-lived <laughs> moment for Burrito. NRG made sure to bring it back, and that was Emilito again. Something about Rom and EU today. They were just on point. We talked about how heartbreaking it was for Fumbala. How it was heartbreaking watching Burrito smack NRG in the face and then NRG fighting back into this game. It's just one of those circumstances where it's it's really fun to cheer for the underdog, but you kind of just expect it to still not work out in the end. And when you have members such as Emilito, Raffer adapting, all these guys together just coming into one unit, it's, it's so difficult for a team like Burrito to really siege a victory for very long off of them. But I still think that the team did an excellent job in maintaining their composure and trying to fight back. Burrito definitely walked away learning a lot from this game. I mean, stop me if you've heard this before. Emilito went off in a game. Adapting went off in a game. <laughs> Huge shocker, right? Yeah, I, I don't think anybody's super surprised by this one. It's kind of just anticipated for these guys to do what they do best, and that's win. All NRG used to do is win. Haven't quite done all winning in a while though <laughs> I, I mean I, there's still a, a couple of tweaks that they can try and work out throughout the season but still a solid performance and i mean with the first two sets already being two lows i think we all know what happened in set number three between obey and the poppies unfortunately for the poppies unable to repeat thursday's performance and they ended up dropping the set 2-0 to team dignitas you look at this game you look at arkel you look at Zeros, this is just ridiculous. Zeros with this Morrigan, is he better than Pretty Prime? I don't know if he's really better than Pretty Prime, but one thing I am certain of is I don't want to see either of these guys play Morgan any longer. And if I'm any of the EU teams in the SPL left to face off against Dig, I don't let him get Morgan either. Absolutely not. And the impressive thing in game number two, not only did Zeros not die, Arkle doesn't die. How do you fight against a team that has these two pillars of just hard carry? And I mean, you can't have that hard carry potential without an excellent front line. I think that Dignitas just provided so much peel and support for Zeros and Arkill to really permit them to just pop off. And that's what you want to happen. You want to provide that gas pedal potential to your hyper carries. And uh, kudos to Dignitas, Trickstank, Qvo, and Variety for assisting their team in such a manner.
We got to see the variety of Tear. We got to see him break that out for the first time. I mean, when's the last time we saw Tear? I mean, that was a bit of a throwback. I, I kind of forgot what season we were in seeing that Tear come out. But I, it's always nice and fun watching some excellent Tear gameplay. Although I, I said it earlier, I'm not excited for what that means next because it'll probably entail quite a few Tears popping up and ranked every now and then. But either way, it's, still, it's refreshing to watch a little bit of the solo lane variety start to kick in, no pun intended. All right, let's look at how all of the teams uh, look now in the standings after today's games. And, I mean, you can already tell it's going to be Dignitas leading the way with a very <laughs> determining 12 points. They are looking pretty for Valencia already. Two weeks remaining. I, I don't think that there's a whole lot of potential for them to not qualify. But with Energy, Obey, and Rival all trailing close behind at eight points, I think it's Enix now who's sweating a little bit considering that if these other teams find their set victories, it could spell disaster for this newly formed squad. We started the day having so many teams close and Elevate having a chance. Elevate is, there would have to be something hugely wrong for Dignitas and these <laughs> other top teams for Elevate really to have that same chance they stood this morning. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think that the potential is still possibly there. When it comes to EU, you really never know what's going to happen. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's really just the competition is so closely packed. It, it, it's just incredible watching how far all of these teams have come as a whole and just the way that they've encouraged each other, I think, to just continue improving. Well, speaking of not knowing what's going to happen, tomorrow we've got the NA scene, and that is going to be interesting, especially looking at the new eager squad uh team ai i mean we've got team ai versus allegiance we've got e united noble Luminosity Flashpoint, and then ending the day tomorrow, we've got Monkey Madness and In Memory of Game. Yeah, with EU, you don't, I mean, with NA, excuse me, you don't really necessarily know how the standings are going to unfold considering these teams are fairly close. I think right now, Luminosity are kind of just expected to be the leaders of the pack in North America right now, and that's predominantly due to the fact that they've just been together for a, a little bit longer than these other squads. Plus, you've got the sex tank to back you up. But I, I think most people are keeping their eye on this AI versus Team Allegiance matchup because ALG just recently took a spill to Noble. Now, dropping that set 2-0 was massive because people were so convinced that ALG was like top three, top three. And now that Noble's secured that set off of them, people are just like, whoa, anything, anything is literally about to happen. And with Chapo and Xenotronics on AI, I, I think it'll be a very fun match. It should be. I, I, you, I look across that entire schedule, and you really don't know what to pick. I mean, you've got Noble, who was looking like a bottom NA team, and then they go punch ALG in the mouth. And then you look at Luminosity. I mean, they have dropped games in the past. I mean, we shouldn't see them drop a game. But, I mean, if Rival can drop a game to the Poppies, I can see <laughs> Luminosity drop a game to anybody. Well, I mean, it'll it'll be a tell to tell, a tale to tell for tomorrow afternoon. And I mean, I know that we're all really looking forward to those matches coming up. All right, that's it for us on the analyst desk. Thank you for joining us for day two of week three here at High Res. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>